Hi everyone and welcome to Vintage Digitals. So the Seiko computer watches are becoming more and more collectible. And I have here two samples of these, uh, the Seiko Data 2000 and the Seiko Memo Diary. And basically they share the same module. Now you do need a keyboard to interact with the watch in the sense of the memo functions and some of the computer functions. But many watches are sold on eBay and other sources without the keyboard. But now we have a way around that because as I showed in a previous video and I am going to link it uh, in below, there is a smartphone app which you can use instead of the keyboard and uh, the way that works is that the speaker uh, in the phone will act as the transmission coil in the keyboard. And I've opened it up here so you can see what I mean. You can see that we have this transmission coil which through induction sends signals to the watch and the watch has the same pair of coil inside it and it will actually pick up those signals. And here you have the watch and you can actually see that a brownish color, copper color that sits around the battery and that is the coil, the sister coil from the watch that it uses to pick up the signals from the battery. So it's this that goes round and round the battery. Now because of that manufacturing decision to build the coil around the battery, many times on a battery change people will use a screwdriver and try to latch out the battery and when they do that imminently they will ruin the coil. Ideally you would have to take this retainer off and then with a suction cup or really gently lift out the battery without touching the coil around because only a, even a small scratch will damage that coil and what you do you interrupt the coil. The coil needs to have between 5 and 3 kilo ohms of resistance for it to work. If you puncture it it will be interrupted and it will simply just not work because you will have their uh, infinite ohms. Now why would you need this part in the watch to work if you're not going to use the computer or the memo functions? Well, when you do a battery change the watch will reset its contrast, which is a downside because it will actually set it to very high. As you can see on this watch you cannot read uh, the display as opposed to this watch on which you can read the display and the way you set the contrast is through the keyboard this button which says CNT that stands for contrast up and down and you can adjust it. The problem with this watch is that it has its coil punctured and it came in for repair this is my watch it also had the same issue and I managed to fix that here you can see a replacement coil and for this one I have to do the same operation and I'm going to show to you what that implies. Now replacement coils have never been done uh, to my knowledge and for sure you cannot find them today. The thickness of this coil is thinner than a human hair it's 0.025 millimeters so that's a 25th of a thousand millimeters. You can see how thin it is. To be able to produce this I constructed a jig which is basically a spool that I use under a microscope and it usually takes me about two hours to spool this up and then uh, I let it dry for a day because I apply some conformal coating for it to, re to retain the shape. It is a laborious work but it has uh, excellent results. I'm going to show you a close-up through the microscope just so you can see how damaged this coil is because if you look at it with a naked eye and even if I'm going to do a close-up with the camera you will think that it is in perfect condition but it's not. We have our multimeter and here we have the two connections from the coil that go through the watch's board and if we measure here we should be reading about 3 to 5 kilo ohms but when we put the probes here 
we can see that it doesn't read anything. You can see right there where we have one of the punctures and if I'll go round and round we are bound to see more of those punctures. There we see one of the wires sticking up, another puncture right there, and you can see those scrapes. Well, those scrapes, you can tell that they are interrupting those wires. There we go, some other dents. Another wire sticking up. Here we have another dent, another few. You wouldn't be convinced that this is so damaged unless another dent, unless you see it under the microscope. And here you can see a big dent. More scraping. That's not a wire, that's a hair. More dents. Look at this scrape. More scrapes. And we are back. Here we can see where somebody put their screwdriver to remove the battery. Now removing the broken coil is no easy feat because the coil, when it's put inside its cradle, it actually has lacquer or conformal coating all over it. And what you do is you have to carefully, carefully just try and scrape it out. It won't come out a single wire at a time. So here we are under the microscope and using this very sharp screwdriver we are basically going to begin taking out the coil and you just hack and slash away until you get it all out. Here we are with the finished result after removing the broken coil and we are going to insert the new one what we have to be careful is to match the two endings of the new coil to the two terminals that we are going to solder to And now we'll test out the result. There we go. 2.933 kilo ohms, which is exactly what we want. And now I'm going to reassemble the watch and do a test with the keyboard. So I've reassembled the module and for future proofing, I added some high strength epoxy around the coil to protect it in case in the future somebody uses a screwdriver and it will slip, that will protect the coil. Now one flaw with this watch is that, uh, well, it came without a spring and it actually has part of the piezo ceramic speaker broken exactly where the spring is supposed to make contact with it. So that's something that I won't be able to repair. And now the moment of truth. Put it in transmit mode and we'll see if the contrast gets lowered and there we go the transmission circuit is working just fine I can increase and decrease the contrast thanks for watching this video and I will see you on the next Vintage Digitals episode.